Hello, welcome to evaluation question one, which is in what way social media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products. So firstly, I'm going to talk about um, a generic film trailer. So a generic film trailer contains um, very, it, it's very fast paced and it contains a variety of different jump cuts. Um, this helps to increase the intensity of the trailer, which makes it more engaging for the audience. And with this engagement, it's more likely that an audience is gonna to want to go and watch the film in the cinema because it looks so action packed and exciting. Um, next, what I'm gonna talk about is social media and the credit block. So at the end of a credit block, um, nowadays there has been um, some social media links such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. At the bottom of our credit block, um, we have put a hashtag, which is type see the movie, and we then put a Twitter logo and an Instagram logo. Because social media is such a big part of society, um, this has become another way in which uh, film companies have been able to advertise their films. Um, and by doing this, it, it creates a wider audience and it, it gives them more exposure, more, more of a way to promote the film. So for example, if someone doesn't really watch the TV or doesn't really go out much, but they use social media a lot, they are definitely gonna, they're definitely gonna see the advertisement for the film, regardless of, of what they do, because social media is a part of everyone's life. Um, I'm now going to discuss um, types of font. So every single trailer, every single film has a font that is specific to them and having a specific font to your product means that you are easily more identifiable. So for example, um, Harry Potter. If you, if you just saw the font, you would easily know, okay, yep, yeah, that's Harry Potter. If you saw the font for Alice in Wonderland, because that font is so distinctive to that product, you will easily know, okay, yep, yeah, that's Alice in Wonderland. And that is what we have done. We've stuck to that convention of a trailer because it's, it's a major thing. So our title, Type Z, has its own specific font. And throughout the trailer, we have a font that is specific to our, to our product. So that when someone sees that font, they're easily like, yep, okay, I know that's type C. And that's what we've done with some of, with some of the captions that we've put throughout our trailer. For example, um, actor names, so like Rebecca Maguire, Jiang Lo, they all have their own, they have our font, so that people know, okay, yeah, that's for that film. Um, another way in which our trailer conforms to the conventions of a, of a generic trailer is that uh, our layout. So throughout the trailer, we have sections where we have act names and we have quotes used. So for example, would you imagine like running if you had to protect your blood? Uh, something like that. Um, so our layout is the same. So we display the release date after the title. That's just a generic convention there. Um, now I'm going to discuss Todorov's narrative theory. Uh, he had three main parts to his narrative theory, and that was an equilibrium, a disequilibrium, also known as a resolution. No, also known as a disruption. And then finally, the resolution, which is also known as um, the new equilibrium. Trailers do not tend to contain a new equilibrium. Because if trailers did contain a new equilibrium, then it would just be pointless because then what's the point in an audience going to want to see the film if they already know what's going to happen? So trailers, all trailers mainly contain a disequilibrium. And this is because 
the disequilibrium as well with the excitement and all the like most of the drama happens during the disequilibrium all the exciting bits are contained there um our trailer doesn't really have much of an equilibrium but the bits that are of equilibrium are when the protagonist rebecca is taking a selfie with her friend and when she's watching a film with her friend um that's all the bits that contain equilibrium um other genres that can um that contain um a majority of an equilibrium are genres such as the romantic genre and the drama <clears throat> but because we are an action film we want to display all of the exciting bits all of the bits that really make the film actiony and what the film is um which is why we show things like a fight scene we show our protagonist running away we show our protagonist being portrayed by her best friend and that all helps to engage the audience into wanting to see the film and that that is what trailers do they show the good bits so that but not all of the good bits they condense the good bits they just show like a second or two seconds so then people think oh but but what happens there and that's those questions those enigma codes make an audience want to engage in the film um so specifically now talking of action codes and conventions our trailer does adhere to the action codes and conventions so for example we have numerous locations the reason why we have numerous locations is because um action films like to give a sense of time so they like to show that 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 the sense of having different locations creates a sense that um all these events have happened over time and it also it also gives for for our protagonist specifically who's trying to run away it really reinforces a sense that she is trying to escape she's trying to get somewhere um we also have a fight scene it's very short but it's very effective you see um one of the protagonists being shoved by his colleague because he is he is now portrayed the antagonist and it ends in slow motion and that slow motion that effect that that really creates a a strong effect because it just it's like wow what's going to happen there like obviously there's more to it because it's a trailer you might find out until you watch the film um we also use guns should we show um a gun within the trailer this is because it wouldn't couldn't be an action film without a fight scene or without um without without seeing a gun so when our one of our protagonists, Leo, is sat down at his desk and he's approached by another character, there is a gun on the table. Um, we film during the day, we film during the night, again to give the sense that the events have happened over a period of time. Um, a lot of trailers tend to end with a with a really so obviously a trailer a trailer is full of enigma codes but the ending of the trailer is is the big like the huge enigma code it's the it's the code that really grasps an audience into saying yep definitely gonna watch that because that ending i know it wasn't the actual ending but that ending that and that enigma at the end has just made me want to see it and that's what we've done within our trailer so i think our one is the big dialogue and that is it's not what it's who um that leaves a question in the audience's head like what does he mean by it's who i thought what's happening who is this who is this si5 organization who is he? What is he going to do? Is he going to help her? 
is he going to is he going to harm her what's going to happen so yeah um we also use uh, a fast paced music now throughout all trailers there will always be some sort of music that is used and this is because it helps to reflect the type of genre and it helps to reinforce the action happening on screen so having the having the fast, having the music accompanied with the different the varied shots um the angles and the fast cuts really gives a sense of drama to the trailer which then again is engaging um so going back to a point i said earlier about font kind of um <clears throat> Within every trailer, which we've stuck to, um, there is always a main character introduction. So you will always see the name of, like, for example, a big Hollywood star. So if Leonardo DiCaprio is starring in uh, that, say, like, say that film, say, say uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, Say he is the big he is the big Hollywood star in that film. You would see his name, and then you see some shots with him with him specifically in it. Um, having this makes would also make an audience want to watch a film because seeing a film that so, so, so say someone really likes Leonardo DiCaprio, seeing that he is starring in the film that could be it for someone that could be the reason why they jump out wanting to watch the film because their favorite actor is in the film and that's what we've done so we have the protagonist rebecca her name is displayed um within the title now our trailer isn't an action love trailer but um we do contain uh, the other protagonist who helps, who acts as the hero for Rebecca, the protagonist. And we displayed his name because he acts as her love interest. And from my research, love interests are usually used within um, the introductions as well. And a final two points. Um, a trailer is in a non-chronological order, so they're just different scenes put together in an audio in an order that looks interesting, and that's what trailers normally do. Because if you have a concise storyline, it's not there's no point in seeing it because you already know the steps that the film goes in. So having it in different bits allows your brain to be bombarded with an exciting narrative which makes you want to watch it and then when you watch it it's like wow okay cool all trailers end on a cliffhanger which is what we've done going back to the point before with the dialogue it's not what it's who 